Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Brief. It's a Friday, uh, June 12th, coming off of the huge down day yesterday, almost 6% in the markets. Got pretty ugly there for a while. If you remember yesterday morning, I talked about we possibly could be hitting that lower limit and stopping out at some point based off of the futures yesterday. That did not happen, but it was a slow leak throughout the day and eventually got down to um, about 6% right around the close. So that's kind of where the where the market left us yesterday. Then as you saw probably overnight that we have already seen uh, a nice big pop in the market, at least in the futures. And Europe and uh, Asia weren't all that bad as far as the market. So last week was rip your face off Friday where the market started up and ended up 900 points. Today we're coming in off the big down day. We'll see, today could go either way. I'm under no illusion that this will be a just green day all the way, uh, it could go, but it could be, you never see. We'll see what horses win out uh, as to whether we're up or down today. But today, investing with military precision, make sure uh, that you have a call sign in there. Everybody looks good. Welcome back to JetMock. Haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, feel free to check in if you wanna join on a permanent basis. Uh, for mission, since I don't know who you are. Uh, mission objectives, uh, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. If you saw my video last night, I am mentally transitioning as a money manager from the from growing our money, which is predominantly what we're doing for most, of, for most folks, to protecting our money. I want to go into the election, which is you know four and a half to five months from now, with a pretty calm head uh, as far as I'm not trying to make a killing, I'm just trying not to lose a whole lot as the volatility of the election comes in. So a little bit of different mindset, not a huge adjustment. It's not like we're going to go out and sell our Apple, uh, but it is a, something you need to bring other things in the portfolio like bonds, pr pretty much everybody, and to take some of the volatility out. Um, but we shall see. But that's what we're going to talk about today for our long-term investor topic is bonds. So bond fund investing. We'll talk about that and then we'll come back later as the academic top of, topic of the day to individual bonds and how you can invest in those if you haven't seen that before. If you're an old hat, then you can chime in with your own experience there. But a lot of people don't do these. Uh, so I'll throw out how I do it and you guys can ask questions from there. For the overall flow, we'll be long, short, open, short, long. Open could be interesting today. Literally anything could happen. When you think of yesterday being the down day, we thought everything was going to fall off the cliff at the open. It did not. It kind of hung in there, kind of backed up a little, but it took like 15, 20 minutes, about the time we were kind of getting out of day trading mode, to that's when things kind of started working as far as the shorts. So I know Burner was in uh, into a few uh, a few trades there through the day, five hours for Kohl's. <laughs> Um, yeah, but things did start working there. And of course, when you see a big market sell off throughout the day, if you've gone about your life and you come back to the computer, uh, you can put in a short trade or a long trade, depending on how it's going. But when you get a big kind of cliff move like you saw yesterday, you can ride the, ride the wave on that uh, as well. Okay, here's the six names we'll talk about. Those are names you may or may not have heard of. Uh, and then we'll get into the q and I already put our Q&A in there, but please populate that throughout the day. And that way we'll have some stuff to talk about. Going into the last 20 minutes, there's the tech support hotline. I think we should have a couple extra names in here this morning. If you have any issues, reach out to the tech through that. You can always go to OTOT now for more information, including how to sign up if you'd like. And standard disclaimer, I do not know your personal situation. I don't even know who some of you are. So obviously this is generic individual investment advice that so you have to do your own due diligence before you take actions on your portfolio. Okay, with that, let's share out Think Pipes this morning and take a look. Now, we haven't seen this in a while where we went from, of course, the big March up mid February down 35% to March 23rd. Remember how bad that hurt? It did, but it was also the opportunity of the year, possibly the decade for buying. So that's why we want to be disciplined and uh, keep our strategy in place so we aren't affected by the emotion of it all. Some of those emotions might have been triggered again yesterday when you saw some big fat red numbers. And of course, the bigger your portfolio is, you get up half a million and above, you're looking at 20, 30,000 in negative number. That can, that can mess with you. So 
don't, uh, that's why we take a look at this. So we had the big run up, all that series of nice little green candlesticks. That's our stair step up and then boom, let's take the elevator down. We shall see, let's kind of refresh. How has the elevator done after a big down day? Obviously that's March 23rd and then we gapped up and had a nice green day after that one. Here's another uh, kind of big move down, decent green day. Here's another big move down, green day all the way back to even. There, we had a uh, big move down, opened back, basically got all back after hours. Here we had two moves in a row and then it kind of bounced. So what am I calling here? I'm not gonna call anything. I'm saying generally there's a green, but it could be red for another day or two. We just don't know. I mean, look at this little waterfall right here. So not the time to get too crazy. Uh, it's more of a wait and see and assess and get that pivot towards safety, if you will. Okay. Let's focus in a little bit. We're gonna put SPY on that, on that chart right here. And I'm gonna give us out to the five days so you can kind of see the, the market action. So boom, there it was. It started from the close on into the after hours market yesterday. And then hello Thursday, all the way down. Got a little bit of optimism. If you saw my video last night, I put it out in this time frame. So yeah, things were looking a little bit better already. And then pretty much opened up and uh, some good news. So we shall see from there. As far as our calendar, probably the biggest name you've heard of today is uh, Lululemon, uh, WIFT earnings. It's the first time, not WIFT, they missed it by a penny. They've, this first time they've missed earnings in three years. So if you follow Lululemon, the stock, I think that's a good long-term investment stock. I'd consider it best to breed of specialty retailers, uh, a house full of young ladies. Uh, in, in my house, I have two daughters, so of course I, I may be a little biased there because that's where Anchor Star dollars go. Uh, but um, pretty good name to be in. So we'll see how they reacted. It might be, might look at it short today. We'll see. Uh, Party City is the one that's highlighted there in yellow. They whiffed earnings uh, pretty big because their because their storefronts have been closed. So I think that stock's on the way to, way down. We will check back later. Okay, we'll get this set back up here and we will move into the going around the world on. The tab here for CNBC. Let's get a quick refresher on where we are as far as the market. Lots of green. So 550 is where we are right now in the Dow. That's kind of when most everybody talks about pre-market. So remember a huge move down today or yesterday, 1800 ish I think, on the Dow. So retracing about a third of that. And then you saw from the other chart, it's it's not screaming any, it's not screaming higher. It's just kind of stabilized at this level. So let's go around the world. Europe in the green, the, the, you get into the discussion on where, you know, we had the big down day yesterday, so our market's going to be down across the world because the US market is down, or now that our futures are in the green, is that gonna pull Europe up? It tends to take Asia follows after us, but then since our futures are back open when Europe opens, they tend to follow what we're doing current day. So to say that again, because that was kind of unclear. Asia tends to follow what we did yesterday, and then Europe tends to follow the trend that we're on today. Obviously, we're not saying that uh, we're more important than either of those two places, but the strength of the American market, or weakness, does tend to drive the other markets out there. So uh, Europe in the green, kind of being brought up by us. You can see this is kind of left over from yesterday, as far as all of the red that's out there. As far as where we did, where we went down yesterday, there's our 1861 in the Dow. Uh, I was kind of calling it negative 6% as an average across the board. But one thing that we did see yesterday was the VIX uh, was up over uh, 40 for a while. So we'll see how it kind of works out today. Obviously, if we have a big green day, the VIX will go down. Some people trade that. I don't personally, but I'm also open if somebody wants to take that homework project and kind of look at trading the VIX. I'm sure there are patterns out there that would make sense. I'm gonna write that down actually going into the weekend. So VIX, it would be a short if you think the market's going to continue green today as vol volatility is dying down. So take a look at that. Bonds, I believe, let's see, little little pop there. That's not too bad. Again, Fed, Fed said on Wednesday that interest rates are gonna be at zero basically for a couple of years. And I'm glad they said that because I think that is the case. Oil's been mostly in the red, so it's good to see a little bit of green there. 
And then gold, both gold and silver obviously popped yesterday and then uh, down and a little bit down in silver. We'll see if the market continues higher again, gold will drop off today. So that's where we are in the pre-markets. Let's take a look at the headlines. Did not get a chance to scan a lot of these, so we'll be working together. Uh, Kramer did say after a brutal route what to buy and it was best to breed. It was Apple was one of the names. So I did scan that a little bit just to see what he was saying out there. Wasn't anything out of the normal. Social unrest continues and the discussion about diversity. I think a lot of these points are valid. Um, you know, what changes need to be made to be a little more diverse in some areas? We shall see. Money management is one of those areas that is predominantly, uh, ha does not have a lot of diversity in it. It's still largely the, the uh, white population and white male inside of that. So we'll see how, thing, how that will all play out. There's a, if you saw Amazon pulled the, they said for a year that the police forces cannot use the facial recognition technology. That's kind of interesting. You would think that our police forces would have the latest and greatest. I mean, casinos use uh, facial recognition. So I don't know where, how all that will play out, but it's an interesting move. I believe Tesla caught a downgrade. Shocker, right? Because the stock just goes straight up. Airlines, I know uh, United was up big 11% this morning, so there might be a bounce across the travel sector we can take a look out for. I'm on Twitter now, at Steve Anchorstar. Follow me or whatever you do on Twitter. I still haven't been bold enough to tweet yet. Facebook's a name we're in, and Facebook cannot stay away from politics, so it's going to be mired in the election. I think it's best to breed because of the long-term ad revenue that it generates, so that's, that's why I'm in it. However, there's going to be ups and downs, and every time you put Zuck in front of Congress, it's uh, almost a Saturday Night Live episode. Um, he's just not getting any better, um, so that can hit the stock. I generally view anything that hits the stock as an opportunity to buy Facebook. Elon Musk, he's in the news every day too. All right, let's, oh, Quicken's an IPO. I had a, had a person read, had a buddy reach out to me yesterday about uh, can we get in on the Quicken IPO? Should be about a month from now. I think it's, a, it says they're the largest mortgage lender. There's challenges there with the fact that if interest rates say at zero, the 30 year fix yesterday just went below 30 for a historic, um, kind of the historic low bouncing off of that. So yeah, I mean, any IPO, you could IPO your, your, your pinky finger right now and it would make money. But um, as far as the long-term viability of the largest mortgage lender, I'm not sure they're going to be able to print money like they have in the past. So uh, if you're interested in that, reach out. Okay, let's switch gears to our long-term investing. We're going to bring up the Schwab board and talk about some bond funds. Okay, what you see here is uh, six different bond ETFs that are out there. I have used, I use half of these and I don't use the other half, but they are popular, so I at least wanted to address them. We're going to start with generic bond theory. So bond, the whole bond market is about six times bigger than the stock market. So process that for a second, because the stock market is big. So when you go off into the bond market, Buying and selling individual bonds is its own little trade desk. You put bids out. You don't just log in and buy like you do with um, individual stocks. With the funds, they do trade on open markets. You can watch them go up and down. You can pull charts, pull the average uh, yield on them because that's important, right, when you're thinking bonds. So you can go in there and do your research and be able to pull that information and buy it real time at, or set a limit for, you know, hey, I want to buy the G bill at, uh, 100.40, okay, and it hits it, it fills. If it doesn't, it doesn't, that sort of thing. Um, as far as when I think long-term investing, I generally stay away from bond funds under most circumstances because of herd behavior. Anytime you get into any index fund, 
you're a little bit subject to herd behavior. And by herd behavior, I mean when the herd starts panicking, guess what? Whether you're standing there cold as, you know, cool as a cucumber or not, it doesn't matter. The index fund's gonna drop like a rock. And I don't like that. You do see that to a certain extent in individual stocks, so I'll give you that. But in bond in funds, whether it's bonds or stocks, you really see that, and I don't like that. Um, another thing with that herd behavior is it forces managers, both on the bond and equity side, it forces managers, when everybody wants their money out, they have to sell stuff to give people their money back. So when people want their money back, they've already started down the, down the coaster, and now the bond money, bought the bond or uh, stock fund manager has to go in and sell. So that makes that situation worse, which can lead to momentum to the downside and also on buying. If everything's expensive and people keep dumping money into the fund, the bond, the, the fund has to go up. So they have to buy things, they have to buy high and sell low. So that's why I try to stay clear. However, <clears throat> why I like them now, um, or I'll use them as a parking lot to kind of hold money till I find a better opportunity out there, is the bond market has been beaten up huge by COVID-19 and the sell-off when everything sold off. So since it's already beaten up, I don't expect the big sell-off into the election and bonds. That's safety. So the only reason people would sell bonds now is because they don't trust them anymore. But the Fed's got the bonds back. They're in there buying the not only investment grade, but the fallen angels, which are those bonds that went from investment grade down to a high yield status. So I don't have any problem putting money into bond funds now. <clears throat> I would be looking to exit that position more towards after the, uh, after the election. Okay, let's talk specifics. When you think bonds, you can go the top two are treasuries. So TLT is more common. That is not the one I use. Uh, I like to use G-Bill because it's a little bit less common, so you see less fluctuation in it. <clears throat> As you can see, the G-Bill is kind of pegged to 100. Um, and you, what those big marches up are is um, these bond accounts act like bank accounts. So the phrase is accrues daily, pays monthly. So every day you hold, if you put 10000 into G-Bill and hold it for a day and then sell it and move it to something else, you are entitled to one 30th of the interest for the month. Just like if you, just like how your bank does the math. So that's why you can see those little moves up. It increases, you know, every day you hold it until the dividend and then it drops down when it pays out and it pays out monthly and then it starts its march back up. The only thing that really disrupted that pattern is the COVID-19 sell-off is where it, if you think of everything in the market that was being sold, people were just literally logging in sell or picking up the phone to me and I got a couple of those calls that says if, if, if it's under my name, you sell it. It's like, okay. And then boom, market orders, just unloading it. And it just made, it brings a tear to your eye, but yeah, stuff had to move. So it was getting sold off. So the market got hit big, 35%. Bonds got hit because everybody was selling them, which normally bonds would go up. Gold and silver got hit. I mean, nothing worked except exactly one thing treasuries. So that's why I bring this up. So people, it's the safety, it's the move to safety. So obviously if it went from, you know, 100.30 up to almost, you know, 101, that's not a huge move. So it's not like you're going to print money getting into treasuries, but there is a, there was a spike and you can see that it's come down a, a little bit there. These things tend to yield, both of them yield around that 1.8%. So it's a little better than your high yield savings. Um, so that's a place where I park cash for folks. Okay, the next level down is SPXB, which I use, and then B&D. B&D, we'll talk about that first. That's kind of the big investment grade bond fund out there, and they were the first one to get the, the nifty ticker B&D to go with it. So um, that's what you see there. I tend to like a little more focused, which is SPXB on the left, because that's the S&P 500 investment grade bonds. So obviously to get in the S&P 500, there's a whole bunch of criteria that need to be met for your company to enter. And then it's those companies that are issuing bonds. And my theory of doing so is it pays a little bit less. It pays 3% versus B&D, which pays a little over. But you have the safety of knowing that these companies are additionally vetted. So you have investment grade. And then out of that, you have ones that are the subset up into the uh, S&P 500. So that's why I like it. 
uh, that you may see, you may hear me talk a lot more about that up and through the election. HYGV is a high yield fund. So now you're thinking about something that's more towards that 5%. These are just outside of investment grade. Uh, it got crushed in with COVID-19 and obviously you can see it hasn't fully recovered. Still kind of want to stay out of this space personally. I consider dipping my toe back into high yield, but why? Let's not be greedy. Let's be smart and disciplined going through the elections. Let's stay with the subset of the investment grade, which is XBXB. And the last one I get asked about all the time, especially from those that either have high incomes, congrats, or the kind of high net worth million plus type folks where tax is now the, the you know, tax minimization and tax strategy is kind of a driver of, hey, what can I do to avoid taxes? Why don't I get into municipal bonds? You can do that, but you can also do a one minus your tax rate math, a little tiny equation, which I'm not going to do now, but I will tell you that generally you're better off taking an investment grade bond and having to pay taxes on it than you are going into municipal bond. You just don't make enough to overcome the tax bite. So uh, that's what I have on that. We can talk more individual stocks later. If you have questions, bring it up in the Q&A. All right, let's take a look at what's going on. So there, we're gonna go through the tabs. While we're doing that on another screen, let's refresh and see where the market is. Okay, we're up at almost 600 up on the Dow. So when I think, you know, the market's kind of creeping in the green, so it may be tough to find shorts, especially if the market is a uh, tear your face off kind of, kind of market screaming higher like last Friday was. Okay. Let's take a look about what's up here. So Americans up big, I talked about United. I do not think it's just a ton of money is gonna flow into these names, but they all did get crushed yesterday. So let's double click uh, American there since it's up. So there you can see it closed yesterday at 14, it's up at 16. You know, you're looking back, what's that five days ago, it touched 22. Not for me, maybe for you. Uh, have fun with that particular ride. I'm not going to touch it. Same thing with cruise lines. Boeing is part of this too. I think Boeing, let's go ahead and bring that up. Uh, Boeing has a little better just because they have that two ways to win. It dropped from 240 to 170 and now it's bouncing up to, to 185. So Boeing long is something to look at. I'm not sure you're going to get a 3R move because you're going to have to have that bigger stop due to the higher price point. But if you wanted a safe trade where you're trying just to make some money, you could take a look at that. Uh, Save was a name that was up on our list yesterday. I believe Predator, that was yours. Go ahead and click it. Um, that's a lower uh, lower entry point there, uh, lower price point. So you can get a lot more shares, kind of you know manage that stop to what you need. Gapping up from 16 to almost 19. It's still spirit. They're still going to cancel you the one flight you need, right? Anyway, uh, enough of my bashing on spirit. Let's take a look at the next tab. All right, I see Sony popping up there. Obviously, there's a, I think Predator put that in the room um, and looks like just committed to it. Uh, Sony obviously released the PlayStation 5. The, from the headline I read, there's two versions. There's one that has the disc that goes in it and you can buy the standard traditional game. There's another one that is download only. So kind of an interesting move there. Uh, we can keep an eye on that, 67 up to 69. So uh, that doesn't appear to quite be 5%. But that's kind of we're looking for that five to ten percent long bit, something we can keep an eye on. And again, the predator who is on a five day win streak or five consecutive wins since no since uh, no trades held up yesterday. Uh, so anyhow, we'll see. That's what the predator will take. So we'll watch that. Not a lot of volume here. Amazon wouldn't touch anything other than just going long Amazon. Um, all right, you're and at that price point. You're not going to get three R. Go ahead to the decliners. See if we can find something short. Some trading vehicles that VS, Direxion, Pro Shares, all those are trading vehicles. We're not going to touch those. There's your Lulu down at the bottom. It almost meets our criteria for volume, and it almost meets that criteria of five to ten percent down. Can't touch it. Uh, it's too strong of a name. People are going to buy that up. So I do not see anything down there. Let's take. A, uh, let's see. We're not going to touch that. Uh, put Tesla in there since we're talking about it from Burner. Okay, same thing. People love this stock. It's a complete short. It belongs probably below 100, but here we are, 972. Not gapping up a whole lot, but it did get an 
upgrade. I do agree that things get close to a thousand, they tend to find a thousand. So if people are uh, getting their let's get stupid on Friday uh, game plan on, then I could see them um, going after it. If I think if Tesla hits 1100, it will be the number one market uh, automaker in the market overtaking Toyota, which is kind of crazy. Um, so we shall see, but that's uh that's there. And it's a, it's a short, got it with a stop. Yep. On a downgrade. So thanks for putting all that in there. Uh, Chesapeake, I think is bouncing in and out of bankruptcy. Uh, um, click on that. So the big move down from 80, oh my gosh, all the way down to 16. People are buying these companies thinking there's going to be a bailout. I don't know. Have fun with that. I'm not going to touch it. Put in HTZ. I saw a headline off of Hertz this morning. It was up 40% or something crazy. Um, so again, Hertz kind of following that same path. It's up even more than 40%. It's uh, it closed at 206. It's up at 350. What? That's what? 75% up. Um, yeah, and they're offering a stock, which is a negative, right? So they're trying, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. It, I'm bankrupt and I want everybody to buy some debt. It's like, do you have Swampland to sell me to? I wouldn't touch it, but it's interesting uh, name out there. Okay. OIS has been a long name out there. Uh, bring that up. This one's been kind of a crazy trade. So it ran all the way up to eight and it's been hammered lately. So that follows oil. So if you're thinking oil might, is on a path to recovery, which I think this is the first time we've seen uh, it tick up. You could take that trade. I'm not excited about it, but I'll check back on it. Okay, what else do we have here? Three minutes to the open. Let's check over to the last tab. All right, I don't see it, but we're gonna go put it over there anyway. Let's put LK in the big window. Check that out. That moved 336. We're up at 370. I would love to take that long, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't think for a trade it's going to necessarily move that way, and we my fingers are still burned on it. So I uh, haven't decided my trade yet, but let's switch over to TD Ameritrade. It will go with our three window view. You can put the trades that are in there. Uh, while he's getting that set up, I will think about what I want to do. Oh, I just hate that trade. I find literally nothing I like. So let me think here for a second. Uh, let's see. So we have Tesla and Sony in there. Click back over the top 10 volume over on this one. Click on OKE. I know nothing about this, but I do like the way that's set up. So I will take OKE, put that on one of our windows, please. Short, it's at 32, backed up to 35. It'll do a 50 cent stop. Stop, open at three, close at 10. All right. That is a stab in the dark, but I do like the way the chart's set up. Okay, and my trade is in there. It looks like we are one minute out. Let's check our volume, make sure we're good. And we'll take a look. So we've got Tesla on the left, OKE, and then Sony on the right. So is everybody short? Nope, Sony's long. So we've got long on the right, short on the left too. Couple other folks, if you wanna hop into a trade, it's free. Check the uh, market futures right here for the open. So 600, so the markets have been moving higher. So up two and a half percent from the uh, pre-market. So that's a pretty nice place to open there. I 
should do okay just because I, I hear you, Burner. I hear you. I've got enough money in LK on the long side. Or I don't need to be in it on a stupid day trade. Okay. Uh, let's see. I delayed my trade. So opens at three. Let's see. In at the open for Predator. So let's take a look at that Sony long on the right. So it's red. So it looks like the open is going to be right there at six, 697 or so will be the open, yep. If you can draw that, 690, yeah, 72, I left, thank you. And that is long, so it's a 20 cent stop, so we'd need to hold 69.52, so it looks like that busted out already for Sony. Short Tesla at the open, so we've got Tesla at the left. Let's zoom in there real quick. Okay, Tesla that's in the green. So Tesla opened at 979.49. So we get that drawn in there and just backed up a little bit, see what kind of stop we got. $2 at the upper stop. So what's that, 981.49? Needs to hold that. And it did not already. So that one busted out to the top side. But we'll keep that up. You can zoom out on Tesla and zoom out on Sony. Mine's delayed, but then again, my trade is working against me, so I'm pretty happy I delayed it there. So we will take, uh, we're at the one minute, so I've got two more bars before that goes in. So that can work to my advantage. Uh, let's zoom out on these two a little bit. All right, it's kind of hard to see. So you're right, you can zoom back in. Okay, I'm still not in the OKE trade, but I do kind of like the setup, especially if, it, uh, if that bar goes red there and then I'm at the beginning of the next bar. Look at Tesla striping down. So busted out of that because it had the stop in, but it looks like you are gonna get the movement you were looking for on that. Of course, that makes me happy. So again, a little delayed entry. You know, it's crazy how often that works if you delay it just a little bit. Also, Sony's on the way down. Okay, there's my entry point. So I'm at the top there, yep, 33.86 it looks like. So 33.86 if you want to drop there. And I said 50 cents, so 86, that would be 34.36 would be my stop. So it'll have to hold 34.36 for me. That's a pretty decent move down in Tesla. It's an $8 move down. I know from a price point that's not, or from a um, percentage point that's not big. But again, if you're trading these big names, uh, certainly, uh, certainly can get big dollar moves out of them. So mine's got to hold the 3436 level, which it has so far. We'll keep an eye on that. Taking it the other way, 120 below that would be draw a line at 3266. Right in there. That would be my 3R point if this thing starts to sell off. I might have just been knocked out. Let's see where that is. 34. Nope, I got plenty of room to the upside there, actually. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's click the, um, let's put the SPY in there for Tesla, just so you can see how the, the overall market's going. And then zoom in, please. Okay, kind of a sell-off and now going back higher, but not a huge move for the market either way. So. All right, I like how Oki is setting up. Held fine, this would be one of these where you could consider if you took a small amount for OKE, you could set up uh, 
Again, that red bar retracing back down to around 30, 33.80 is where you would get that entry point down there. Just kind of hit it. That's kind of an add situation. If you were winning half size ahead of time, you would add there and then wait for the, uh, the strike down. So we'll see if we get that stripe out of the uh, OKE. All right, let's uh, bring up the left board if we can minimize, slide that over. We'll see what's working along over there on the uh, quote monitor. Take a look at some numbers. There we go, very nice. Okay, LK up 11%. That was all pre-market, so I don't think that's moved so much. Let's bring up LK in this panel. Well, it did move actually quite, what's that? Uh, yeah, that's 12 cents or so. That's not a huge move down. Now it's kind of uh, going back long. Let's see, love that Southwest up 10%. We got Boeing, uh, Delta all bouncing up around that 10% point. Got some options in there. Uh, shrooms, a, I always blank on that word. Psychedelic stock. Callaway Golf's been on fire, up 8%. Maine is business development. Mineral is a Austin Brigham uh, Minerals. LCNB. Lebanon Bank, 6%, nice. Even NEO's up uh, 5% there. NEO's the Japanese, or China, excuse me, Chinese uh, automaker there. Okay, let's look and see who's in the red. Again, we're upper left on the screen, if you're trying to follow along. Not a whole lot in the red today. You know, one psychedelic name, that's that RVVTF. Uh, Clickstreams, Penny Stock, Blue Ridge is the bank, and SPTL. So, that's, we talked about SPTLs and other treasuries names. We talked about TLT, we talked about GBIL, and there's also um, SPTL is another common name that we're in. So, okay, so uh, got my trade still cooking. When did I say I was out? Generally, I give it a little while. I think I was out at 10. All right, so we've got some time there, and it still hasn't really striped down yet, so I'm in the green, but certainly not enough to even get excited about. So still waiting for that big sell-off. And again, it's probably gonna be swimming against the market there. Okay, LK trucking back higher. Let's put Tesla in the uh, left-hand panel. So it had that $10 sell-off kind of all the way back to the uh, point and then kind of busted out you know, to the higher there. So it's almost right at the entry point. Other names we're gonna look at is, let's put Lulu in that left-hand panel. So again, we're gonna do Lulu off of a short in the, so depending on the stop, so it opened at 303, you would have had to have two, it held a $2 stop. So $6 to the downside, 296 is where it would have to go to for you to make your three R's. So looks like that um, would have worked even if you took it right at the open. Bunch of volume, if you look in the middle there, OKE just got a big buyer coming in. Um, that's generally a sign to kill a trade when you get a huge spike in volume and it's, and it's going up like that. I've got a hold uh, 34, 36, so still safe, but I'm not liking the action that I see there. There's, there's a big buyer out there. Okay, uh, so back to Lulu conversation, that's kind of slowly selling off over time, so. Yeah, not looking good for OKE. I would imagine that could either be a buyer or a, a, a short seller covering. <laughs> Predators out there moving markets. Uh, I bought enough SPXB yesterday where I think I was like a third of the total volume for the day. Kind of crazy, huh? Um, I like it because it's a lower volume name. So I am barely into this trade, but I'm not expecting to be in it unless that thing stripes down <laughs> here, here in a uh, big way. Let's see, other names that's upper left to go with uh, UAL. Again, this was gonna be a long after the 10% gap up. So yeah, if you look at that, all your own, unless, you know, unless you're patient and took it at the five minute point, which, I, I don't know that I don't see any way you could have been convinced that okay yeah that's the perfect time to enter that trade I certainly wouldn't do that long with an airline uh, that's more of a 
if that's all inverse, I could see going short on an airline that would back up at the opening. But uh, good for all those people buying American Airlines right now. Okay, let's pull up VIX. Again, I think this is something I want to take a little bit longer look at. I talked about the VIX short. Again, if you have the big green day, the VIX opened up at 37. Uh, would it sell off throughout the day? Um, it actually looks like it opened, it gapped down to 36.6 at the open. So that would have uh, right there. So went red and then backed up almost uh, 40 cents. So I don't know if you'd have been able to stay in that trade or not. Um, but anyhow, that's something I want to take a look at in the future. Not that it's predictable, but there certainly is, uh, there's going to be a, a thesis there to, to really kind of take a look at. Okay. I'm at my 10 minute points, so wherever this current bar closes, I'm currently in the red on OKE. So it appears that I need it to go south in a and we're done. Um, well, I saw the clock tick. Yep, I'm done. My trade's in the red, so I didn't get busted out of it, but I exited the trade in the red. So no winners today. I didn't overlook anybody, right? Nope, no winners. In a way, Predator's trade is still alive. But yeah, the VIX thing, going back to the conversation in upper left. Yeah, look at that. I mean, there, there can be money to be made there, I believe. All right, let's take a look at another name on the upper left, OIS. Again, it's an oil name. This was a long. Um, it had sold off pretty hard, so, and it's bouncing back up. 5.50 down, 20 cent stop, it kind of held. So, hmm, may have worked, maybe not. And let's look at keep LK up in that upper left. Yeah, making money, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's put SPY in the middle. And we'll keep Sony up in the uh, upper right there. Okay, so this is where the market's going. Let's refresh down here and see what we're doing as far as the overall markets. All right, up 800 points in the Dow. Um, almost 3% 3, 3 in the Dow and almost 3% in the S&P and NASDAQ. So pretty good sign that 12 minutes into the day, this kind of uh, bounce back from yesterday's sell-off is still working. So I like that for all of our long, long-term investing stuff. Would I be excited about buying in here and putting new money to work? No, absolutely not. I, I would not put, I'm still going to rotate towards safety, which means I'm looking to sell a few things that I don't like. So when you rotate towards safety, obviously when you look at a portfolio, you like everything that's in the portfolio, otherwise it wouldn't be in there. You'd already sold it if you didn't like it. But if it's in there, you may look at reducing exposure. Like if you bought a crud ton of LK yesterday when it was down at 330 in resistance, you could lighten that up now that it looks like I just cracked $4. So that's one thing you look at or um, if there's names you don't like as much as others, you might either cut that position in half or cut it all together. Um, and then you're going to turn around and put bonds in, which is what we're going to talk about right now. Okay. So overall, that's the market action. Uh, let's see, let's put Hertz in, uh, upper right. There we go. Cause I want to keep watching LK print cash. So again, Hertz is the bankruptcy story with the, that should be selling off hard. I have no idea why it's up unless there's activism in that. Okay. All right, over to the questions. What is the general uh, stock bond allocation based on age? All right, good question. So when you think of the old adage, if you will, um, put spy over here, if you will. Um, you, you should own your age in, you should own your age in bonds. Okay. so. Let me make sure I said that correct. So you really don't need any bonds, obviously, while you're a kid. But as you progress into the workforce, the safe move is to, if you're 25, you would have 25% bonds. That's generally far too conservative. But then again, we're coming off of a 10-year straight-up bull market with a little hiccups in between. So what's worked and what should be your allocation over time? Uh, I'll buy that. I think that's way too conservative for me. But then again, I stare at it for six and a half hours a day while the open market, and I might look at it a few more hours afterwards, right? So since uh, when somebody's, when you're paying active attention to something, you don't need to be as conservative as if you're just like 
uh, log into the 401k. Uh, give, I'm 30, so I'll go 30% into the bond fund, 70% in the stock fund. Click, and I don't look for 10 years, right? And I get that. A lot of people do that. So um, bonds and age, obviously, when you think retirement age, you're tripping. Generally, most people don't retire till after 50, and now you're over half bonds to kind of more be in that more be in the wealth preservation phase versus the uh, capital appreciation kind of phase. So, good question. Uh, go ahead and 50 to 70. So, yeah, you'd be 50 to 70 percent. I will say that even for um, so the older folks, I would say at least 20 percent in equities there's still no reason for, I don't care how old you are, not re no reason to not have a few shares of, of, of Amazon. Let's, you know, put, put a thousand shares of Apple and you don't have to worry about anything else in your life, right? Um, so there's a few names you would definitely want to be in. Facebook's not a name that I put folks that are in retirement in. Um, a little too, could move on political stuff, but um, some equity exposure and for the rest, most part bonds. And that's where when you think back at this COVID-19, kind of the double whammy for if you think maybe 65 or 70 and up type folks, not only can't they leave their house, see their families, which again, what's important at that age, you know, you think family is important in retirement because, you know, now they have lots of time. And so the double whammy of I can't leave my house, I have this virus that could take me out because it was disproportionately dangerous for the um, older older folks, and then my portfolio is taking a hit, which if it's designed correctly, it's going to take a hit, maybe 10, 15%, but it shouldn't take a hit worse than that because you're in bonds. So um, th that closes out that question. We're going to go into, should I invest in bonds? I'm in and out. I generally, just for situations, for me personally, I will have bond exposure, and I have some individual bonds anyway, just you know, that's the ultimate in safety money. I don't carry an emergency fund in the bank I, because that's dead money to me. So uh, it's just not making enough. So I do have individual bonds stuck away and that's kind of the oh crap money, if you will. Um, generally, I don't go into a bond fund, but I might going into the election just to reduce volatility. Again, I'm not in the bond, bond fund to make money. I'm in to not lose money. So more of a preservation uh, mindset. Um, and that, that's me at 50, but I look at it every day so I can afford to be a little more uh, aggressive. If you're just setting an allocation and forgetting it, you know, 60, 40, 60 in stocks, 40 in bonds has been a, that's kind of your academic, you know, portfolio, if you will, just do that and you'll be fine. And that's true that you will be fine. Okay. Um, how should I invest in bonds? Again, most people don't have the savvy to go in and buy an individual bond because it's far more difficult than buying a stock. So uh, I would generally, unless you have a person, you know, have somebody who does it for you, I would stay away from that uh, myself. But that's why bond funds are in there. So I gave you six options. So when you think, okay, I want to go super safe, think treasuries. I want to go to the next level. You're going to think investment grade. And the level after that's going to be high yield. And then if you want to avoid the tax person, then you go into municipal bonds, which are, which are all going to be tax, tax exempt. So that's kind of your hierarchy of the bonds. So we're going to go over now. So let's check back on the markets real quick. LK, uh, that's only like seven cents. It's moving there. Uh, the SPY market's coming in a little bit. And Hertz is selling off. I'm curious to see where Tesla is. Look at Tesla in the upper right. Okay, so move down, moved up, moved back down. So we'll see. It looks like it's kind of following the uh, following the market there for the most part. Okay, let's go over to the the. I put up a bond fund. Let's go definition first. The next one. Okay, um, we're going to share this out real quick just to talk about bonds. Can be told. It can be confusing. Um, it's fixed income. It's literally a piece of paper to where you're loaning your money to a company. That's it. People get confused and they're like, well, what are the things that affect bonds? It's like, oh, don't ask that question because there's like 12 different variables and it's like learning calculus and most people got nothing for it, right? So, I mean, convexity and duration and all these things go with bonds and building bond ladders and portfolios. You don't have to worry about that. If you get an individual bond, First of all, you're buying it not to sell it, you're buying it to hold it to maturity. 
uh, wherever you buy it, they all track around 100. So if you buy it at <clears throat> 90 and five years later, it's going to mature at 100. So you're going to have capital appreciation as well as the coupon payments along the way. If you buy it at 110, you know you're going to have, you're going to lose basically 10% because it's going to sell out at 100, the, but you're going to have the payments along the way. So <clears throat> let's see what this has in here for some key takeaways. It's interesting, so it's obviously companies, and we talked about this, Predator brought it up with Hertz, is companies can issue debt whenever they want. So if you think back to COVID-19, here comes the Fed. Fed says, we're all in, we'll do whatever it takes. I love all the things that Powell says. However, Powell is saying, we've got the bond markets back. We're going to hop in there and backstop the bond market. Well, as soon as the, um, as soon as they say that, they're, you know, Exxon Mobil said, really? Okay, bam, issued a bunch of bonds because they could, right? So they borrowed a bunch of money, don't necessarily need it to do anything with it, but they borrowed because they can. So you think into the, you know, relating that to personal, it's like, who's got all the best credit scores in the world, literally? So people with the money, right? There's some responsibility there and some other things because you kind of get rich being responsible with money. But who can't borrow? Probably the people that do actually need to borrow, right? They can't. So same thing in the, when you think of the investment grade world, investment grade companies can borrow, the others can't. You know, rich get richer sort of philosophy. But uh, the Fed has the market, has, has the market bond markets back. So a bunch of companies issued that. So where the Fed thought they were gonna come in and sop up a bunch of the uh, supply, it has taken a lot longer than expected. All right, you get a fixed interest rate. Uh, it's called a coupon. Uh, so you know, dividends generally pay four times a year. The bond funds pay monthly. The bonds, if you hold individual bonds, it pays every six months. So, and if you buy a bond and it's halfway through the period, you pay the previous bond holder that interest for you know, those three months. And then when it hits your coupon payment, you get the full payment. So. You kind of have to pay. If you set up a bond portfolio, your, your portfolio immediately goes in the red because you had to prepay that interest, which you have to get to that first coupon payment before you get that interest back. Bond prices inversely correlated with interest rates. So interest rates are basically as low as they can go. Okay, and you have a maturity date. You get your money back. That's it. When it matures, if it's a $10,000 bond, you get the last coupon payment and your money back. All right, not gonna get into, there's the par of 100. And here's where you start getting confused is when you get into, so don't even go there. All right, got another screen here. We're gonna take a look at um, bond. Again, there's bond mutual funds versus bond ETFs. Mutual funds tend to be a little more actively managed. There is a Vanguard municipal fund that I want, that I was trying to bring up, but it wouldn't bring up the ticker. Um, VTEA. X, I believe, for Vanguard tax exempt. Um, it was the ticker. Double check that. That is correct. Um, so yeah, you, but you're going to pay a little bit more for a mutual fund when an index fund will largely do the same thing. So something to consider there. So to kind of wrap up the bond market is, yeah, use a fund if you're doing it from an allocation perspective. If you're starting to live off your portfolio, at some point getting towards that income generation. You can buy a whole bunch of bonds, you can ladder them out, and that's just income coming in. Bond interest is taxable, is fully taxable like your income though. So where capital gains and dividends are tax favored, bond interest is not. So something to consider there. Okay, we're going to look at the market real quick. <clears throat> See how we're doing? Okay, 700 on the Dow. We were up a little earlier there, so it's uh, coming in some. I'm looking at the uh, S&P, or it's the SPY screen, and yeah, kind of back just to uh, about down where it was when it opened or so, and it looks like across the board that's the case. So that's what I've got for you today. Thanks for listening in. Have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you guys back Monday. For the squadron members, for the guests, thank you uh, for coming out. Uh, if you want to join ototnow.com, 25 bucks, pretty good deal, I think, uh, for a whole month. Um, if you're a member, you'll get an email Sunday night with next week's uh, login information. With that, you guys have a great weekend.